Brother Bumani, man with the master plan. What you yes, got Green to say family. about the meeting? Yes, Greens family, we appreciate all our wonderful brothers and sisters for coming out on this Black African Women's History Month program talking about our sisters in travel, mainly our sister Sass and our wonderful sister Teresa Noni, two dynamic sisters that's been traveling the African globe for a very long time and have been encouraging our brothers and sisters to return home to experience the African experience outside of America. Uh, family, this is important journey. Make sure you visit our website at Africa for the Africans.org so you can view the, all of the documentation that we have on YouTube, Facebook, uh, the website itself that talks about preparation for African content, preparation to escape this America, ka, 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 and for us to be a part of nation building energy. It's hard for you to, to understand the importance of, of that connection with our brothers and sisters outside of America until you literally make a journey. And that's why we push this all the time, and we push Africa, and we push for us to return to our roots. We have done the finest, the best that we can do here in black America. And all of we have done, we're still slaves on this plantation. We're still in a situation where we're not getting what we need to get, and we're not building what we need to build, and we're not building a future for our children to really you know, manifest their destiny. You know, uh, our children are being be most they can be. slavery. They're being groomed for the prison industrial system. They're being groomed for all kinds of systems Work. that keep them working here and giving all their energy until they die to make America rich and strong and make all of these wicked, evil, white devil corporations and folks who you know who have their, their, their who, who, who controls the holidays, who controls all of the madness that goes on that we participate in and fuel them to be richer, to oppress us more. So family, use some of your resources, save, cut back, work on a game plan for you and your family to make a journey to the motherland. Also make a, a journey, make an organized effort to put energy together and think about the exodus move. Think about what you can do to connect to the African content, what you can do to eventually build a, a future game plan, you know, to put more of your energy into the continent. If, over the last 20 to 30 years, if we were to put 1% of our energy from black America alone, not just even the other parts of uh, the known black world, the African continent would be the greatest nation on this planet right at this very moment. You know, so that's why we're always being confused and thrown off and, you know, the, you have the decoys out there to just get us scrambling, get us competing, get us fighting, get us beefing with each other. That way we don't focus on the game plan. Family is about nation building. It's about connecting to the motherland, connecting with your brothers and sisters on the content so you can learn about the roots and culture, learn about how you can be a part of the greatest movement that we need to happen for our people to return to the land of our ancestors. Our ancestors right now, you know, are flipping in their graves because we're spending too much time in America. Once we were stolen, you know, and once we got, got receive opportunities to where we can start making moves, we should have taken more advantage of those opportunities and we'd have had a bigger repatriation move. But family, it's not all is not lost. We can still make wonderful moves. This is 2017. We have wonderful journeys to the African continent, Ghana in May, Ghana, Togo, and Benin in November, and this wonderful Brazil journey in July. And also we can uh, connect you to many parts of the African diaspora, African continent, and the known black world. But I may want you to pay more interest in what I'm talking about as far as developing this energy of us looking to do more to grow the African continent, do more to build a strong bondage with our brothers and sisters here and get them prepared for reconnection. One last thing, Brother Bumani, is there anything wrong with having our own, our own land, our own education, our own food, our own political process? Now, brother, that's always a great uh, question. And we are, we're, we are a divine, sovereign people that, are, that is entitled to our own nation and entitled to our own systems. But unfortunately, sometimes we feel like we can build our own nation here in America. And that's, I mean, like I said, we've been at our finest hour here, the best of the best, and we're still Work being used as modern day slaves on the plantation from all of the black folks in the government system who think you've made it, you got the top notch job, you got the, the six, seven figure salary, you got the big house, you got the cars, you got this, you got that, you got the boats, you got the vacation. You know, all of that is just to, just to smooth you over and butter you up and let other black people see you and say, hey, you know, what, if they can do it, you can do it. But all of this is just individual gains. We're talking about nation building, we're talking about a nation of people coming together from the African diaspora and say, we want to go back home. We were stolen and brought to the Americas for the purpose of making other people's excited. dreams and life come true. If you, if you think about, think about it, look at things like uh, the resorts that we go around the world that are owned by white folks and, and Asians. 
the, the situation that you have is that when, you going? When, when, when you're on the plantation working, the white folks is working with you, when they get that vacation time, they go into those resorts and they're being serviced by your people. You know what I'm saying? All around the world, our people are being serviced, servicing white folks. You know, it's time for us to service ourselves, take care of ourselves, and that's what the journey of a lifetime is. It's for, for us as a people to take you by the hands and connect you to the motherland and make sure you have the greatest time of a lifetime. Make sure your, your journey is fruitful. I'm going. Exactly, exactly fam. Wonderful people going and we have more room and more room for you. All right. One of the other projects, Brother Bumani, we got the land up, uh, the opportunity for land up in the Benta region. Ben Benu village in the Bronghafa region. Techiman. Uh, so there's going to be houses on this land that people could rent or do timeshares with? Yeah, absolutely, family. We're going to be coming out with more details and, and GoFundMes and a bunch of things. And just anything to encourage us building our Africa for the Africans diaspora repatriation village. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, you want to repatriate, you want to be able, you want to, be able to take the best advantage of sustainable living, get five to ten acres, Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your, your groups of people who are interested, and you build sustainable homes, you build your solar, you build your wind, you, you power, uh, energy, you, you, you create your catch water system, you set up your containment for sewage, you grow all of the food that you need 100% organically, so you don't have to eat the, the garbage and the pesticide and all the madness that you've been feed from. And, you know, McDonald's and, uh, and everything. And you just go to places that say they're organic. It's just like, organic is just like, so, you know, it's just like one of those things where, it, you know, it, 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 organic is not really organic. It's so some like of that. the houses on the property that we put together, uh, are you still spending the same price? Like say a three bedroom over there on our property, is it gonna be the two, three hundred thousand dollar house here, or is it gonna somehow you're gonna save money? You're gonna save money. One of the things when you're doing the bark, when you're doing communal living, where groups of people are working together, you're gonna make sure you, you're not you're not you're not gonna build a big fancy expensive house. We're all gonna have nice. S small. We're gonna leverage our space to where it could be it, it could, it could it's maximized. You know, to where so you know you have like maybe a one two room house and it's all built for the purpose of efficiency, the purpose of of sustainability. To where you're not putting all kind of heavy resources into you know one into one home. You're, you're you're splitting it up and you're building all of the things that you need in the community. To eventually, if you need a hospital, you need banks, you need airports, you need any kind of major industries, you need a power plant, all those things you can eventually build. But the most important thing is you have to have access to the land. Our sister earlier talked about uh, land in different parts of Ghana and different people building group projects, and that's the way to go. Build these group communal right, projects. Too. That way when your brothers and sisters from the diaspora are looking for somewhere to, to, to come to the continent, you know, they can be a part of your community group. They can purchase their plot of land and they can build their homes. They can connect with similar like brothers and sisters that are very enlightened, sharp, conscious, and overstand that we as a people are using our energy to build a few, the future of an independent, great Africa with our brothers and sisters on the continent, and we are focused and ready to make it happen. And is it true that some property can be, I mean, some houses can be built on our property for as low as 15, 20,000? I mean, you talk about five, 10,000. Uh, by ten thousand. If you if you talk about like a, a, a like a one room chalet, with, you know, you, you get your kitchenette and you got your bathroom and your shower and you got your basic space. I mean, anywhere from five to ten thousand. Heimakus Heimakus uh, uh, Resort One Africa. The chalets that we stay in. She she mentioned between five to ten thousand dollars. I mean, family. I mean, yeah. when you do things communally, I mean, it comes out so much better. So. You know, once you start looking at these things and looking at how we're being used and abused on the plantation and being used and abused for, for mortgages, for, for this and that, and you know, all we're doing is just growing somebody else's future and growing somebody else's strength. Let's focus on building wonderful things for ourselves in Africa. Anything that you can think of building, we can do it in Africa. I mean, That's you have beautiful. to put a little work into it. I mean, it's not like just walking out your door and then you just see a whole city built, you know, which we want to build these cities, but unfortunately, they, you know, our labor and work, we built them for our oppressors. You know, we are forced to build them for our oppressors, so now let's be gladly put our time and energy into building a nation for ourselves in Africa. And I mean, you have Ghana, you have the Gambia, you have Senegal, you have, you know, you have... You got Kenya, over 56 Tanzania, countries. You have Ethiopia, you have South Africa, Namibia, I mean, and so on and so on. And then you got so many... You have the Congo itself, you have Central African Republic, you have 
countries on the African continent that have everything that you need. And all it's waiting for is the wonderful brothers and sisters that were stolen from the continent and brought over here to work on the plantation to return the brain drain, return the great minds back to the continent. So that's what we push in family. And that's why it's called Africa for the Africans. And that's why it's called repatriation. And you got hundreds of investments that are not on the Fortune 500 that could be super beneficial to a person that chooses to invest over there instead of here. Brother, we can change motherland. Almond Get oil, name a few of them. Almond oil, You're talking about fruits, um, a lot of agriculture. You talk about go oil stocks. You talk about mangoes are in abundance in Ghana. Can juice. That's all. That's the importance of manufacturing. When you're in a tropical country, you start manufacturing all of your fruits Clothing. and vegetables. You're not leaving anything to waste. You're, you're recycling all of the uses of important things like uh, something as uh, you know, uh, as almond. You know, yes. you know, you have you have other parts of you know that parts of Olives. fruits that you can use. I mean, there's not there's not one thing I can think in my mind that does not grow in Ghana. Can you think of anything sass that doesn't grow in Ghana? It doesn't grow. Grow, grow in grow, Ghana. Grow. Tropical countries like Ghana. Grow. Uh, everything grows in Ghana. It's a, it's Why would you not want to be somewhere location. where everything grows? Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's the purpose the of going to the mother. There. We're not going to, a, you know, sometimes people are confused about what's going on with, with the movement we're talking about. We're not talking about going to some impoverished, no resource place. We're talking about the African continent, the richest country. The best dirt. And the only thing it needs is you to put your resources to the ground and get to work with the rest of us, and we can build a future for our children. So overnight. as far as you know right now, with all the work you did, the Navy and stuff like that, and working in the United States, if you had two hundred thousand dollars, would you buy a nice house in uh, Alpharetta, or, uh, uh, Buford, in Atlanta? Some nice houses up wow, there, or, or would you put two hundred thousand into Ghana? Man, that's tempting, man. I can, cause you know what? Cause that means I could be living with some good white folks, I, and then I'm gonna be worried about these crazy ass black folks that be trying to get us. Nah, man, family, you use that money you know, and build, it, use it to build your community, your black community that you live in, or. Use it to build sustainable communities in African continent. The thing of what we always have to think of, whenever we have resources, we have to keep it in, within us. You know, you, 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 have, you, have, you, have, you groom your daughter to be this great daughter, you groom your son to be this great man. Don't, get him, don't, don't let him get married off to the enemy. Don't let him get married off to a, a white person or someone else that's not a part of our community. Let's keep it in, 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 in us and keep focusing on working on these things. I mean, that's why we're dropping and sharing a lot of things to you and letting you hear voices from different people because it's not just me, he, or she, or one or two people. It's, 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 it's a whole, it's, you know, it's all evolution we of We need us. it to that's be millions of us. That feel like we should not stay in America and be modern day slaves to, to keep on fueling this enterprise, to oppress us and save our children and ship them off to the prison system, ship them off to this poverty and madness. I mean, this is crazy. We have all, everything that we need to, to make start making moves now. I'm not saying it's gonna happen overnight, but if we start gradually start making this move, within three to five years, African content is rising and we're creating more and more opportunities for people who may not have certain opportunities in America and then now they can live, do business in Africa. They can have a quality of life. But 10 to 20 years from now, you can see more trips, more ships of, uh, of of what we're doing now, where the groundwork, where 10, 20 years from now, it could be more flights. It could probably be our own industry and plane going there, or our own industry like Garvey, uh, of having ships going to the motherland for, for, for import export business. Excellent, man. That's the, the greatness of uh, Marcus Garvey. Uh, Marcus Garvey is one of the few of our great brothers and sisters from the African diaspora that overstand that we must build a nation for ourselves in Africa. I've, I've heard, I've listened to many great scholars and many great brothers and sisters that, that talk pro-black and, and, and pro this and conscious and that. But it's like, it's like, if that's not leading to the fact that we need to build a future for our children and a future for the, our people in Africa, then I don't know what all this education is, is doing. It's making us feel good to be, to be black people that built the world and did all those wonderful things and yet we just yet still gonna stay in America. No, it should be for where we continue a movement of where we say, hey, we need to start traveling more to Africa, we need to start connecting with all black people in other parts of the world. We need to stop marrying white folks and other people that are not in our race and other people that don't have our interests and start keeping it real. So keeping are you saying point. so you are you saying similar to like say Asian Americans who might get a degree here or Middle Eastern Americans who might get a degree here, they're always thinking about back home. They're always sending money back home and building back home up. Are you saying pretty much that's the same thing yeah, we absolutely. should do? Absolutely, and or do the same thing as the the, the European Jews. You know, the yeah, European they Jews build up are the not Israel. trying to just not trying to 
have you know be around Hitler's children and 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 and, and they shake hands and hang out with them. They're trying to build their own so they don't got to be put back in that oppressive situation that they were in. And the same as we as a people, you know, we were stolen from the African continent, you know, by some of the worst, sickest, nastiest white folks that ever existed. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so some we, of the worst conditions and still now we have we're dealing with the same condition with the same sick folks, except it's just a more updated version of this oppression. So it's like, you know, what makes us think that people who have so much privilege of over oppressing us is gonna wake up one day and say, It's okay for you to marry my daughter, I want you to be part of our family, I want us to be equal, I want to give you the same pay, I want you to have the same opportunity as anybody else. You know, it's it's just not gonna happen. I mean, how else much longer must we stay in this nation? and keep on thinking that things are going to change. It's never going to change. I mean, the, the, the history of events in America have proven, have proven to the fact that these damn devils will never change and they are in, and, and as long as you think that you can keep on trying to wait for their validation and want them to accept you, it would never happen. So black people, if you're going to stay here, build business and do it for yourself and work together with your own people and invest in your communities and the same thing, then and, and connect with us in Africa and also invest in African content. Is that, that the African continent be strong enough to where no one can mess with us. If something goes on with you in, in black America, the African continent got your back. But right now, it's not going to happen until we build Africa. Isn't that the definition of insanity when you keep trying to do the same thing and you expect different results? I mean, if we got proven history that they did all these foul things was for almost 500 years, at some point in time, you have to break away. That, that, that makes common sense to me. Uh, so I ask you in a, in a form of a question then, uh, why do people you think still send their kids to their schools to get educated when you know their school system is messed up? Why do you think that we still play a part in their military when you know they lie to us about military takeovers? They knew it wasn't no weapons of mass destruction in, in uh, Saddam. They knew. Uh, Gaddafi was trying to unite the African people. So yeah, definitely, definitely get, you, get your point. The unfortunate thing, when you live in this oppressive system, your outlets are the oppressive system. You, 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 you're ready for a job, you're working at, you know, you're working at a slave plantation. You're ready to get educated. You have you know, the universe that's going to miseducate you, get you. But first they start you off in the church, the church or the religious system and start you off also in the education system. So now you think if you leave this one education system and go to the next, it's like literally you know, one may be better than the other, but as long as we're in this country and in their, their system, all the curriculums, all of the governance from from different variations of school are still controlled and dominated. All the books are still written by these white devils, messing up the history and telling you the same old lies. I still can't believe that folks still celebrate Columbus Day, one of the stupidest, foolish <laughs> madness that I've ever just even just connect with just based on our studying history. So family, don't want to get into too much dialogue about too many things. You know what I'm talking about, family. Visit our website, AfricaForTheAfricans.org. Yes, yes, yes. Peace.